central to Christianity is the exclusive claim that Jesus is the only way to God, the only way to experience his gift of forgiveness and eternal life. But that raises often a common moral objection. What about people who've never heard of Jesus? Isn't it unfair that they've never had an opportunity to respond to God? And wouldn't God then be fundamentally immoral in condemning someone for not trusting in Jesus when God himself had determined that they would never have so much as an opportunity to even hear about Jesus? Now, of course, if that is what God is going to do, then it's hard to see how it couldn't be immoral. But we need to take a step back and ask ourselves whether the assumptions and questions and scenarios like that are actually true. And the first thing to say is that it's simply not a biblical idea that some people have been circumstantially determined because of where or when they exist to never have an opportunity to know or to respond to God. In fact, the very opposite is true. The Apostle Paul told some of the world's leading philosophers in Acts 17 that the Christian God who made every human being determines both the timing and the location of our individual existence, not so that some of us can find God, but precisely so that each of us would seek God and find him because he's not far from any one of us. God is not willing that any should perish. But secondly, the Bible makes clear that God has given us evidence of his existence that every person can respond to because it comes not simply in those familiar means to some of us in the West, like having the Bible in our language or having someone explain Christianity to us, but also comes in evidences like creation or our consciences. Paul says in the book of Romans that by observing and contemplating the order and the beauty of the natural world around us, God's attributes, his existence, his nature can be deduced and perceived by every person whether they've heard of Jesus or not. So at least at that level, no one has an excuse that they've had no evidence. Now you might say, okay, fair enough, but what about Jesus? The evidence of creation and conscience is not the same as the evidence of God's full revelation in Jesus. So those people still haven't had the same opportunity as others. And that's a fair point. But that raises a question that's really at the ethical heart of this topic, and it's this. Is the Christian God the kind of God in his judgment who will morally distinguish between the levels of revelation or evidence that people have had and the evidence that we haven't had? I'd like to suggest that the answer to that question is yes. Because right throughout the scriptures, we see God judging people not on the basis of the evidence they haven't had, but on the basis of the evidence that they have. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness, but he'd never heard of Jesus. In other words, Abraham responded to the level of evidence that God gave him and he responded by trusting God. And God judged that trust from Abraham as the right response on the basis of the evidence that he'd had. And if God holds us accountable on the basis of what we do with the evidence we have had, that also suggests that God won't condemn people for not responding to the evidence they've never had. In fact, Jesus made this clear right throughout his ministry. In John 9, in a discussion about responding to God's revelation with a group of religious rulers, Jesus said to them, if you were blind, in other words, if you'd no opportunity to see God's evidence, you would have no guilt. But now that you say you see, Jesus said, your guilt remains. Or in Matthew 11, Jesus said to some of the villages of Galilee on the, that on the day of judgment, it would be more tolerable for citizens of places like Tyre and Sodom in their rejection of God than for Galilee because they had rejected God on the basis of far less evidence that Galilee had received. And that suggests two things about the nature of God's judgment. One, that God is able to know how we would have responded to him with types of evidences that we may not have actually received. And two, God will hold each of us accountable on the basis of what we've done with the evidence we have had. Meaning that if we've had more evidence than others, we might be even more accountable. God will morally distinguish between the opportunities we have had and those we haven't. Now, of course, that's not to contradict what I said at the beginning and suggest that people can be saved outside of Christ. Because without what Jesus has done, no one can be saved, not even Abraham. 
but it is to say that when it comes to the moral question of what God will do with the differing levels of evidence that each of us have had and responded to, God's accounting of our lives will be individual, proportionate, and ultimately fair and moral. And absolutely none of us will object to his verdict.